Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I wanted to make a pixel art color palette tutorial, as in creating your own palette from scratch, because I hear a lot of new or beginning pixel artists ask for tips, advice, tutorials on everything from making their own palette to just choosing out colors in general. When I was trying to make my own palette, it was hard to find resources on exactly that, making a pixel art color palette from scratch. There's a lot of resources on color palettes, on color theory, on pixel art. It was hard to find the information I needed to make a decent palette. And I'm not the best pixel artist, so don't take anything that I'm saying here like it's set in stone. I'm just going to give you a guideline to make it really easy to get started. And as you get better and learn more, just start breaking away from that guideline. So when I recorded this, I actually narrated the entire time, but then I found there was a problem with my mic. So I decided to just throw away the whole audio, speed up the video and get something out to you today um, because I don't have time to re-narrate the whole thing. So if you have any questions, or if you're a pro and have any tips, I want to eventually make a better video. So go ahead and hit me up with those and hopefully I can incorporate them in someday. So first I'm just showing you the palette I made for my game Survive the Day. I made it from scratch and you can kind of see what we're working towards here. But before we try to make an entire palette, you first want to practice with shading one color. I drew an eight here because that is the amount I'm gonna adjust the hue, saturation, and balance for each shade of this color that I'm gonna start with. When getting lighter, the brightness goes up, of course, saturation goes down, hue shifts towards the brighter color. So for in this case of blue, it shifts towards the brighter blue. We'll talk more about that later. When it gets darker, it's gonna to shift towards the purple. That kind of just makes sense, right? For darker, everything is opposite, of course. So you can see me actually counting out eight to adjust each of these values. I'm going to leave these first few colors at regular speed because I want you to see what I'm doing, that I'm actually sitting here and counting and moving each of these numbers by eight. Um, in the, for the future ones, I'll speed them up so you don't have to painfully watch me count through them. But I just wanted to show that I'm not just blindly moving it, I'm actually moving it by a certain number. When you get better or get a better eye, maybe then you can kind of just eyeball it. But I think when you're a beginner, you really do have to follow some guide. You can't just kind of pick a random color each time that you think looks good, because once you get to the end, that's when your palette is not cohesive, that your colors don't look well together. You know, you might make one sprite and it looks good, but then you throw it in the background or throw it with the other sprites and things just do not look right and you don't know where you went wrong. And you may have noticed for the lighter shade at first, I increased the saturation. That wasn't an accident. I was kind of just pointing out why you don't want to increase the saturation on your lighter shade because it just did not look right at all. It looked actually like a darker shade, even though it was brighter. And we're going to make a little cube just to see what it looks like um, on something. Because, you know, just the little swatches don't really tell you that much. And now we have this cube. It looks okay, right? But you don't want to stop here and say, okay, now I'm ready to make a palette. You want to play with things for a while. You want to try different things out. That's how you learn. If you just stop right here and just go straight to, okay, I'm going to make a palette. You didn't really learn anything. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to put the numbers on the screen that we're going to change the hue, saturation, and balance. I'm just going to do the same thing just by changing it by different numbers. And we're going to see how the cube ends up this time. I like this cube a little bit better, but I don't think we're quite yet there. So we're going to change the amounts again and repeat the process. 
This time we're going to increase the amount we shift on the hue. You might have heard of hue shifting. That just means changing the hue value. So we were hue shifting before changing it, but this time we're really going to see some hue shifting going on as we're increasing the amount. So here I'm kind of talking about the shadow. You can see that the shadow, the shaded side, is more purple, but it kind of feels realistic. This time I'm going to start from the darkest shade. I kind of like that purple. And I'm going to increase the amount of change in the saturation. Now these two cubes look way different. The one on the right looks really purple. The one on the left looks more blue. What I'm going to do here is put the some of the colors side by side. So you can see that I put the darkest two colors side by side and they're both the same. And the lightest two colors side by side, I'm showing the values. They're all the same values except for the saturation. The one on the left is more saturated than the one on the right. But even just that one change kind of gives a different feel to the whole cube. I'm just throwing on some different backgrounds here because that plays an important part. As you can see, maybe you think one cube looks the best. If you throw on different backgrounds, your opinion on which one looks the best might change because it all has to be cohesive and mesh together. You can't just have one cube that will always look the best no matter what colors you put it around. I'm gonna to switch to GIMP for a couple reasons. One, I find it easier just to change the values. And two, I just wanna show people how you can do it in another program. Now we're gonna make a whole palette. We're gonna start with something simple again, and I'm gonna change all the values by 12. The color you start with, you might wanna be strategic about. So if you're doing a nature scene, or if you have a lot of grass tiles, and you're gonna have green all over, you probably wanna get that green that you love, and then build around that. Um, same thing if it's underwater, maybe you want to start with the blue. So you want to be kind of strategic with the green. I'm going to start with the green here, and we're going to change all the values by 12 as I move through the piece. So as you can see, by changing the hue by 12 each time, we're not going through the colors that quickly. I have a lot of green shades. But when I do make it up to the yellow, you can see the brightness is all the way up at 100. So when you're going towards the, when you want to make your reds, Obviously, you can't and don't want to increase your brightness anymore, so you're going to start making darker shades, so decreasing the brightness and increasing the saturation as you're moving towards your reds and purples. Now, I get to the end here. I didn't quite make it around through all the hues. We don't have blues on the palette. I kind of have to improvise at the end here to make these really dark shades so the bottoms can connect. I mean, it's not completely necessary that the bottoms connect, but a lot of times that will help you out. As you can see, switching the hue by 12, I'm not changing the hue a lot as I go through the colors. So when I get done, I actually don't have all the colors because you see I don't have a blue. The colors we do have, it looks like they go together pretty well and you could probably draw something from this if you didn't need a blue but let's try it one more time this time i'm gonna change the hue by 30 just to make sure that we get all the way around the palette this time i'm going to start with blue again and you can see, even after the second color, it already is looking purple, pretty purpley. Now I'm going to transition the purple into the reds. So I'm going to keep changing the hue in the same direction. But now I want to go brighter because, like, to get to the reds. So I'm going to increase 
the brightness and decrease the saturation. Then after a few colors, I'm going to make it to the yellow. So then I'm going to want to switch again and start going back towards the dark greens. Now you can see here we made it around. It's not perfect where it will end up where you started from, but this is a start because we kind of have enough colors to work from. So I'm going to take the cube and apply the palette to this cube just to see how we did here. Now I'm going to struggle to figure out what else I should draw. The yellow just didn't seem quite right. So I went back and retouched that. Like I said, sometimes the connecting pieces you have to improvise with. And now I'm just taking a look at the Survive the Day palette as it has more colors, just showing you how there are some offshoots on that. As you can, I need an offshoot to make the browns. Um, I made a beige and light less saturated blue and then to the grays but there's really not that many more colors in my palette than we made it than we created right here now just to leave you with a visual uh, maybe you can take a screenshot of this let me make a little grid here l is for getting lighter d is for getting darker so of course the brightness will go up when it's getting lighter and going down when it's getting darker. Saturation goes the opposite of brightness or value. For the hue, it kind of breaks at the yellow and purple. So the blue and the green, you wanna move down towards the yellow. So blue is going towards light blue and green is going towards yellow. And for the purples and reds and orange, you want to move towards yellow as well. So that's going up when it's getting lighter. Now, like I said about breaking the rules, I did read about someone that makes their palettes where the lightest shade actually reduces saturation as well. So I just show, drew a quick example to demonstrate that as it gives a different visual feel, but it still is cohesive. So go ahead and once you feel comfortable, start testing out breaking the rules in different ways. There's lots of different styles. Like I said, this is just one. That's pretty much it. But before I go, let me leave you a couple more tips or random stuff. So if you do want your palette to connect, like I said, it's really not that important. It kind of just looks cooler than it helps. But in this case, if you want to connect these blues to the greens, you may discover a color that will work well in bridging those if you're having blues next to greens and it's not looking quite right. So I'm just kind of rearranging the palette and then finding a color to match it. And I don't know if there's a real rule for that. I think you kind of just have to go and try different things out. The first color I did looks good. These two other colors look a little bit too bright to me. The second tip is the gradient tool in Acebrite. Maybe that will help me figure out a couple colors in between these two. So let me copy the palette over to Acebrite. I'm going to generate the palette from the current sprite. So what you do is you go over to the color palette and you select a range of colors and then you go up and click gradient. That won't change the two end colors, but it will change the colors in between and make a gradient out of it. So it changed these two colors I was having difficulty with. I haven't used this tool much, so I'm not sure how it calculates what colors to make them. These colors look a little desaturated or pale to me, but you got to admit they do kind of match. To test out this gradient tool a little bit more, let me just copy over the four end colors from the palette, and then I'm going to space them out and make a gradient between each of them. And then I will put all those colors into the sprite area and we'll have a little quick palette. Here. This method created a decent little palette here. It's a lot different than the palette we created, completely different feel and style to it. That's because we went through and chose what values we wanted to increase and decrease the hue, saturation, and brightness. And whatever method that Acebrite used to calculate those changes, 
it came up with completely different values. So changing those values in a different amount is, of course, going to change the whole field to the palette. And the last tip I have for you, I'm not sure what the pixel purist will think of this, but in GIMP, you can go up to the menu item colors and drop down. There's several different tools you can use to kind of change the hue, saturation, everything of the entire palette together. So you can choose hue saturation is uh, probably the best one where you can try brightness contrast if you don't want to change the hue at all. Um, you can test out if you want to reduce the saturation in the whole palette, increase the saturation, change the brightness, etc. It's a good way once you get a palette that's cohesive together to kind of test out if you're wanting something a little bit different from the whole palette without sitting there and remaking a ton of new palettes. Like I said, I had a little technical difficulties and was under a time crunch. So I apologize if I wasn't able to explain some things fully, went a little fast or was a little bit choppy on the explanation. But I would love to make a really great color palette tutorial video, whether you just need to edit this one or create some new content. So hit me up. The best place to do so is on Twitter at Lou Bagel Combo No Five, or you can uh, just comment on the YouTube video if that's where you're watching at. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know any feedback or questions. And I'm usually pretty good at responding. Thanks, and have a great day.